I mean, I pitched East Siders to anybody that would listen to me and nobody wanted to make it because it's like a bunch of queer people on the east side of Los Angeles. Where's the hook? Nobody was knocking down any of our doors to give us a career in Hollywood. Fuck, I'm glad I'm gay right now. I think a lot of people assume that the show is autobiographical and they're not entirely wrong, but it's not necessarily the parts that they assume are autobiographical. Obviously, my husband and I produce the show together. It's about a gay couple living in Silver Lake, California with a cat in this apartment. And we are a gay couple living in Silver Lake, California with a cat in this apartment. There's definitely a lot of parallels between our lives and the characters' lives. But Cal and Tom are not Kit and John. Their journey is far more uh, dramatic than ours is. <laughs> Cal, wait. Hey, right now, I just want you to leave me the fuck alone. Watching the show back through the years, it really feels like this time capsule, this record of my husband and I's life over the years. We have seen our apartment transform and we look back and we're like, oh my God, that's our couch from 2010 that we got at St. Vincent de Paul when we first moved in together in Los Angeles. And there's a lot of nostalgia looking back at those early seasons. Like, Remember the first night we moved into this place? Just stared up at the ceiling. Remember, <laughs> you said some cheesy shit like, I've never been happier to not afford cable. It really wasn't until season two came to Netflix that the show developed a global fan base. Looking back at our season two Kickstarter backers, a thousand people came together to make the show. Almost all of them were in the United States. Looking at the Kickstarter backers for season four, they're all over the world. You're gonna publish one of my road trip essays. <laughs> Congratulations. Which one? That one. Yeah, okay. 